Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Thursday the 14th of September and this quick preview of the week beginning the 18th of September. And we're coming off the back of a fairly mixed week for equity markets. We've seen breakouts in European markets, the DAX specifically in the Euro stocks 50. We've also seen new record highs for the US benchmarks as well. I think largely on the back of the fact that I think there's a widespread sigh of relief that the damage from Hurricane Irma wasn't in any way near as bad as initial estimates suggested it might be. That being said, um, I think there is now a slight shifting of expectation that ultimately the damage caused by the hurricanes will act as a significant break on US economic growth. And as such, I think it puts on the back burner a little bit the prospect of a US rate rise um, this year. That being said, the dollar has managed to rally quite significantly over the course of the past few days. But I think that's largely predicated on a belief that we could finally be starting to get some um, form of clarity on tax reform. However, I'm not holding my breath on this one, but what has been, I think, a hallmark of the change of the last week or so and change in the last week or so is the fact that the FTSE 100 has significantly underperformed. And that's largely been as a result of the fact that we've seen a little bit of the weakness in copper prices. We've seen some weak economic data out of China. More importantly, the pound has managed to rebound quite significantly because of market perceptions of what the Bank of England might well do in the next 6 to 12 months. It would seem to me that the market is now starting to price in the prospect that we might see a reversal of last year's or a partial reversal of last year's stimulus that we saw in August 2016. A stimulus package that I argued at the time was unnecessary and prompted this week's CPI numbers um, to push back to a five-year high, equaling the levels that we saw earlier this year of 2.9%. More perversely, however, we've seen unemployment fall to a 42-year low. So I think as we look ahead to next week, I think the main event will be two more central bank meetings, namely the Bank of Japan. Um, we're not expecting any change to policy there. More importantly, the Federal Reserve's latest meeting. And I think that will be important in the context of whether or not the Fed still remains on track to formulate a plan for balance sheet reduction. But I think also we'll get some insight into what the Federal Reserve perceives is the likely impact caused by Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma and what effect that will have not only on their inflation forecasts, but their GDP forecasts as well, as well as their dot plot um, their, their dot plot predictions going forward. What I think is become quite apparent in the past few days and weeks is that the central bank is likely to have a much more dovish slant um, going forward. And I think that's really based on the fact that the people are likely to be an awfully lot more cautious about the economic growth that we're going to see between now and the end of the year as the US economy recovers from the damage that these two big transatlantic hurricanes brought about. So over the course of the past few days, we've seen the dollar index rebound quite strongly from those lows at 91. Certainly in the context of this hammer here, which I'm highlighting on the chart, we could well see further gains in, sh in the short to medium term. If I draw in a little bit of a trend line on here, that should give us a certain indication of roughly where the resistance line is. And we're sort of there or thereabouts already probably a better rule of thumb is to really have a look at potentially um, this level here on the dollar index. And what we've also seen is potentially a breakout in the value of the pound in the wake of those that, that Bank of England meeting and that statement which suggested that um, several or a majority, a majority on the MPC um, thought that um, some partial withdrawal of stimulus might be prudent in the course of the next few months, obviously, if the data holds up. So what we've seen in the pound against the dollar is this break above that 133.20 area, which I highlighted as my, my target in the April breakout that we saw earlier this year. We've gone further than that. We've gone further than that by quite some distance. And I think the next level to really keep an eye out for on the cable is the 200-week moving average. Now, that comes in just above 134. So certainly be looking very closely to see how the pound reacts around that particular level and to see and much will be much will be determined, I think, 
on how dovish the FOMC is or how hawkish the FOMC is with respect to its policy stance as we head towards the end of the year. And let's not forget also that as we head towards the end of the year, Stanley Fisher, who's the vice chair of the Federal Reserve, will be leaving in October. So September will be Stanley Fisher's last meeting as vice chair of the Fed. But currently there won't be anyone in place to replace him. And he's not likely to be replaced until early next year. And it also obviously casts into doubt um, with respect who's going to replace Janet Yellen. At the moment, her future still remains unresolved, though Donald Trump has softened his tone uh, around Janet Yellen. So there is an outside chance that she could actually stay on. So we'll have to wait and see on that point. What am I also keeping an eye out for this week, apart from the Federal Reserve and the Bank of Japan? I mean, they are obviously the primary um, factors that I'm looking at, but I'm also looking at the latest CPI numbers out of the European Union. Um, we've seen prices drop back to 1.3. Going to see whether or not there's any upward pressure on inflation there. Certainly food prices in Germany have ramped up quite significantly over the course of the past few months. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not that translates across into the mainstream EU CPI numbers and whether we get a move back towards 1.4, 1.5 and 1.6%. And we also have flash PMIs from France and Germany. What we've also seen over the course of the past few days is a significant reversal in euro sterling. Um, so for all of those people who are calling for parity in euro sterling, um, all those at the, um, at the end of August, towards the end of August, it looks like um, they're probably going to come unstuck on that particular call. And I have to say, I'm not really surprised by that. When everyone starts calling for parity in euro sterling, in the same way that everyone was calling for parity in euro dollar, usually that's time to actually turn your position around. And that certainly looks to be what's happened here. If we look at the way the weekly chart looks, we weren't able to break above that previous high at 93. We've since reversed quite substantially. And it looks to me as if we could well retest this 88.50 level on euro sterling. Probably will see a bounce there because we're quite we're, we're significantly oversold on the daily RSI, and we've also got the 100-day moving average coming in, which could also prompt a little bit of a rebound. So that's it for this week. Once again, thanks very much for listening. This is Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.